This is the work of the devil. Uh, no! Stay down there. You actually have much better options for making a pumpkin pie than pumpkin. Welcome back to another episode of Gut Instincts. I'm your host, Dr. Steven Gunderstein, and today things are going to get a little scary. That's right. In honor of spooky season, we're going to be ranking spooky foods. In fact, we'll be looking at several ghoulish delights to see which ones are treats for your gut and which ones could haunt your health. I'll be ranking these superfoods from S to F. S stands for superfood, and F means it belongs in the trash. I also want to assure you that your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. I've revamped the board to give us a little extra space for the healthy foods, along with the ones that aren't so healthy. Now, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you know what's good for you, and give this video a thumbs up if you're looking to stay in the know about your gut health. Let's step into the unknown. First up, we have trick or treat candy. Now let's face it, around Halloween time, I know your hand always wants to reach for the candy. Okay, I get it. Now while tasty, this isn't the greatest option for your gut. This stuff is pure sugar. And if you've listened to me long enough, sugar affects your microbiome and actually makes bacteria, which have no business being in your upper levels of your intestines, crawl up there to get to this stuff. Sorry about that. It's an F as hopefully everybody knows. I mean, what's better than pumpkin pie at Halloween? Here's the problem. Pumpkin is part of the squash family, and pumpkin has large amounts of lectins. Now, it's particularly true in the seeds and also the peel. And while pumpkin flesh has far fewer lectins, you actually have much better options for making a pumpkin pie than pumpkin. For instance, sweet potatoes have no lectins, and they're a much safer choice when thinking about things that you would use pumpkin for. So pumpkin, unfortunately, is right down. Eh, we'll give it a C, because I know you're not gonna avoid it, but it's not your best friend. Similarly, pumpkin seeds. I used to be loving pumpkin seeds, pepitas, and thought they were so good for me until I researched them, and they are just a phenomenal lectin bomb. These guys will tear holes in your intestines. Sorry about that. I cried when I gave them up, but they're also an F. On the other hand, you're really eating pumpkin pie for the spices in pumpkin spices. And in fact, the spices in pumpkin spice mix are actually really good for you. They're all very high in polyphenols. Put your pumpkin pie spice on a sweet potato, you'll get all the flavors you associate with the holidays, with fall, but you'll get a much better result. So pumpkin pie spice is a superfood. One proviso, a pumpkin pie latte, or a pumpkin spice latte, takes pumpkin pie spice and brings it right down to F because of all the sugar and junk they put in there. Just because it says pumpkin spices doesn't make it a superfood if it's mixed in with sugars or other lectin-containing foods. Black licorice. Now, traditionally, black licorice actually has some benefit in changing your gut microbiome for the better. And there is really good evidence that licorice helps to seal leaky gut. But licorice also has a ingredient that can actually damage your kidneys and make you have high blood pressure. So it's not to be taken lightly. Plus, almost all modern licorices have very little of the licorice root in them in the first place. 
Black licorice, uh, it's down in the C column. Sorry about that. Spaghetti squash. Now, this one was a darling of kind of the low carb era of trying to find a replacement for spaghetti. And while it's true that spaghetti squash has very few calories, the problem, it is part of the squash family. And I unfortunately have patients who absolutely test positive with sensitivity to the squash family. So even though it sounds like a good idea and sounds low calorie, in my practice, for good reasons, it's banned. So, uh, eh, going down with the F group. Black garlic. We're, you know, you notice the theme here. There's black things, there's orange things. Hope you're noticing. Now, black garlic is aged garlic. Garlic is so good for you so, for so many ways. It's part of the alum family. Add it to your cooking. There is black garlic extract in several of my products. It's that important for you. Anytime you can get garlic into your diet is a good time to put it. But as you know, garlic will protect you from vampires. So for the holidays, for the fall season, for Halloween, get yourself some black garlic. Deviled eggs, ooh, how devilish. So deviled eggs are a great way to get people to eat eggs that they might not otherwise eat. Deviled eggs, depending on the spices you put in it, I happen to think that deviled eggs with smoked paprika or Hungarian paprika are a great way. Fun fact. Anytime you ferment chilies, and paprika is a chili, anytime you ferment it, you take the lectins out of it. So for instance, any hot sauce that's fermented, like Tabasco sauce, is safe to eat because the fermentation has destroyed the lectins. So deviled eggs are actually a great way of getting an egg, providing it's pastured, or omega-3 eggs into your diet. And please, check the pastured egg label. When it says fed a vegetarian diet, chickens are insectivores. Their job is to go out and eat insects. A vegetarian diet is not an insectivore's diet. And so many people find out too late that their pastured eggs the chickens have been fed corn and soybeans or even wheat, and that's a no-no. And whenever I see a patient who has been having a reaction to eggs that are pastured, we always find that they've bought the wrong pastured egg. Bone broth. Bone broth, folks, here's the problem. Most bone broth is made from beef bones or pork bones. All of these contain a really nasty sugar molecule called NU5GC, can stick to the lining of your blood vessels and can stick to the lining of your joints, causing joint discomfort. On the other hand, if you get chicken or duck or any other poultry bone broth, they have NU5AC, which we make and which is actually beneficial to us. Regular bone broth, no. Chicken bone broth, yes. So just remember, chicken bone broth. Blood oranges. Now, one of the great things about blood oranges is that they have far less sugar content than traditional oranges. And because of that dark color, they have far more polyphenols than traditional oranges. That's why most people really don't like them because they're not sweet. But these can be great in cooking or they can be great to eat. Look for dark oranges. It's the best of the orange family in terms of getting polyphenols. One final fun fact, the peel of any orange has a compound called D-limonene. And that's one of the best substances that improves your liver function and your liver function enzymes of anything. In fact, D-limonene is one of the components of my complete liver support family. Don't avoid the peel. We'll put those guys, and eh, we're gonna give it a B. Eh. Yeah, B, just because there's still a lot of sugar. Squid ink pasta, which we all eat during the season because it's black. Just because they put squid ink doesn't make pasta any better for you. 
So don't be fooled. It's still made out of wheat. And that's a no-no. Squid ink's down with the F. All right, how about a quick quiz? Let's see how much you know about candy apples. Here are two facts and one lie about candy apples. Can you guess which one is the lie? Number one, Newark, New Jersey is the birthplace of the first red candy apple. Number two, candy apples and caramel apples are made using different processes. Number three, the first red candy apple was created for consumption in 1930. The answer is three. Red candy apples were randomly invented in 1908 when candy maker William Kolb created a few as display pieces for his storefront windows. Funny enough, his display apples looked so delicious, people would actually stop by and ask if they could buy them. A sweet surprise for those who love delicious Halloween treats, but unfortunately, these won't be kind to your gut. There's the candied apples. They're, they're going way down here too. Sorry about that. All right, let's get back to the rest of these spooky foods. Dark chocolate. Now here's a winner. Now dark chocolate should contain at least 72% cacao. The higher I can get you to go in percentage of cacao, the better it is for you. I personally eat 85, 90% cacao chocolate. It's tough getting used to, but if I can start you at 72% and then work your way up, that's the way to go. Chocolate is loaded with really great polyphenols for you. And quite frankly, a number of chocolates actually have some pretty good fiber in them. So look at the label, look at low sugar, more fiber, but dark chocolate in the right form and in the right amount is clearly a superfood. Devil's food cake. This is the work of the devil. It is so delicious. You will be tempted. Please resist all temptation for devil's food cake. It is the work of the devil. F. Lady fingers. Well, we had that lady finger. Same thing. Lady fingers. Come on, folks. This is just wheat and sugar in any other form. Join the devil's food cake. So it's down here as well. Hot dog mummies. Who doesn't rave about hot dog mummies at the Halloween party? As the name implies, if you eat this hot dog surrounded by like pigs in a blanket, you will be mummified quicker. It's one of the killer foods in a spooky way. So it's down with the Fs. Ghost peppers. I know everybody wants to have pepper eating contests and hot sauce eating contests, and I was no different. I used to go for the killer stuff and always wondered why I, you know, reacted so poorly, uh, particularly the next morning. We used to have an expression that I'm sure you're well aware of. The hotter it tastes going in, the hotter it feels going out. And I can confirm that that's true. Why is that true? These things are loaded with lectins. But proviso, if you find a fermented ghost pepper hot sauce, go ahead and knock your socks off and your balls off, but make sure it's fermented. Please don't eat the real thing. So could be good for you, but most, of, as long as it's fermented, but otherwise buyer beware. Caramel corn. Oh, what says Halloween and the fall? Like caramel corn. Double trouble. Corn number one. 95% of all corn in the United States is genetically modified. And it has a protein called the cry protein that your immune system has never seen. And we see so many of our patients react to the cry protein in genetically modified corn. Plus, almost all corn in the United States has been sprayed with Roundup glyphosate, a great gut disruptor. So caramel corn, uh, I need more Fs. I need more Fs. Red licorice. Now, red licorice has absolutely no health benefit. It's not made from licorice root. It's made from sugar and basically red dye. 
Just because the word licorice appears doesn't make it licorice. And I know you want to buy the giant tubs at Costco. My wife used to do that. Uh, not any longer. Put it in the F pile. Now, let's go for a quick recap. Let's see what we got. So there's some superfoods. Pumpkin spices, as long as you don't put them in a latte. Black garlic. And extra dark chocolate. I emphasize the extra dark. Milk chocolate is off the list. Milk actually binds all the polyphenols, and milk chocolate is made from what's called Dutch chocolate or alkalized chocolate. So, off the list. You can make a healthy deviled egg, and it's a, actually a great way to get some vinegar into you and some spices into you. Chicken bone broth, not beef bone broth. Blood oranges, great source in the citrus family of polyphenols. Pumpkin pie, eh, substitute sweet potato pie. Black licorice in small amounts are useful in repairing leaky gut, but the way we eat it, not. Ghost peppers, fermented, fine, don't eat them like that. And then oh, the Halloween candy, no. The pumpkin seeds, no. The squashes, no. Red licorice, no. The squid ink pasta, no. The candied apples, no. I'm, I'm beginning to cry. Uh, the caramel corn, no. The mummy hot dogs, no. The devil's food cake, <laughs> no. Stay down there. If you enjoyed this episode of Gut Instincts, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Let me know in the comments which spooky food is your usual go-to. Remember, Eat smart, feel great. I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'll see you next time. And that is my gut instinct.